All right, guys, so my name is Neil Young, and I am an administrative assistant here at the Southern Alleghenies Museum of Art in Altoona. And for today's online art class, we will be focusing on pop art, and specifically Andy Warhol. So pop art was an art movement that was popular in the United States during the 1950s and the 1960s. This was a time period in which our country started to grow after the end of World War II. Everyday life for Americans started to change due to the economic growth and people started to buy and spend more. People started focusing more on just the essentials to life but instead started to buy new technology and care more about their appearance of their life. Things like the invention of television allowed Hollywood and music, specifically rock and roll, to be broadcasted to more people and help fuel the dream of being famous. Pop art captures this exciting time period by depicting popular everyday items. Richard Hamilton once described pop art as low cost, young, witty, glamorous, and mass produced, which I think is pretty accurate. There are many incredible men and women artists of this time period, but for this lesson, we're gonna be focusing on one of my personal favorites, Andy Warhol. Andy viewed art as a product, the same product line as Campbell's Soup. He liked to use bright colors and silkscreen techniques to make large scale art that was focused on advertisement. So for any of you that don't know, this is Andy Warhol himself, and he is actually a Pennsylvania artist, actually from Pittsburgh. Some of his large scale work uh, looks like this. You'll see the series of uh, silk screens here and how they sort of disappear. He embraced uh, imperfection actually. Uh, for this lesson, let's focus on two very distinct characteristics of his artwork, color and repetition. Andy is known for using non-traditional color palette. So for this drawing, let's use random colors that you think might look good together. And feel comfortable, if, if you feel comfortable with your first drawing, feel free to draw it a couple more times and possibly switch the colors. So for this project, let's try recreating Andy's Campbell Soup series. This was a series that he did in the 1960s that featured Campbell's Soup. He uh, did not just do tomato soup, but that was the one that he was most known for. And so to begin with that, let's start drawing. Hey Jess. So first, let's look at the Campbell soup drawing itself. It might look intimidating to some of us, but um, once we break it down into its basic shapes, it's pretty simple. So let's start by drawing a cylinder. I always tend to draw on pencil first because I'm a very messy artist. So use anything you have if you have markers, pencils, it's all right. Hey Connie. And once we're happy with the cylinder, let's go ahead and outline it in some marker. So let's embrace the imperfections and focus on the individual shapes. 
not the whole object itself, like I mentioned once. A lot of Andy's artwork has rough edges and are not even completely visible, so don't feel the pressure for perfection. Also, let's not attempt like perspective for this can. Uh, let's just draw pretty much what we see from our imagination. So once we have the basic cylinder down, then let's start on the label. So the Campbell soup has a circle in the dead middle with a separation of the red and the white in the middle. Now these lines will not be exactly straight. They should sort of go along with the lines in the top and bottom. And we can add some details to the can itself as well. Next, let's focus on the Campbell's Soup logo, the font within the picture. So the Campbell's Soup font is more of a cursive, but for this project, we can pretty much use any font. And you can choose your favorite soup. For this, I'm actually just going to continue on with the tomato. So once we have the basic outline of our drawing, oh hey Julie, uh, we then can start coloring in our project. So like I said before, we really should focus on abstract colors. So like in this, the original Campbell soup is red and white, but that's kind of boring, so let's choose some random colors. Um, here you can see he used orange and blue, which is really cool. They're complementary colors. And let's start painting or coloring it in. So if any of you really like what we're doing today, I definitely highly suggest going to the Andy Warhol Museum in Pittsburgh. 
It's an eight-story art museum that features all of his work from the 1960s onward and every medium possible. It's truly breathtaking. Be sure to be pretty careful when going over top of Sharpie drawings. Uh, this black, I made sure that it was completely dry before I go over it with the red. Um, the nice thing about Sharpies is that black always shows through, so it's really good for outline. And so next, let's start adding some details. So there are some gold in the original uh, Campbell's Soup label. So let's mix up some gold paint. Today I'm using acrylic paint, which is my personal favorite, but feel free to use oil or anything else that you have. This paint that I'm using right here is an acrylic heavy body paint. There are multiple kinds of acrylic paints. I tend to use more fluid acrylics, which are in the bottles. They're a little easier to work with, but the heavy body works really well if you just mix a little bit of water in with it.
That's okay if they don't have paint. They can use markers, crayons, really anything. So what colors are some of you guys using for your can? Anyone using traditional colors or abstract colors? So for the color of the can, let's try using a gray of some sort, whether that's marker or whatever medium you choose. Oh, nice, Kylie. Teal and pink. I can't wait to see that one. I was originally going to do other colors, but... I only packed the traditional.
So have any of you guys been making any artwork during this quarantine? I know I've been taking advantage of the time. And then we can always add some highlights, whether that's white, um, you could even use a white out, you could use a white marker, white crayon, anything, but giving it a little bit of highlight will sort of make it pop. And you will see on the bottom there is actually a couple little stars which you can draw. And within this circle there is a very detailed picture, but for this let's just leave it one solid color. Add a little highlight.
should come up with a finished product that looks something like this. I can't wait to see what you guys created. Feel free to post your drawings in the comments or on our page. Uh, we would love to see what you're doing. And I can't wait to see what colors you guys used. Our next art lesson is going to be uh, next Tuesday, actually, April 21st at 2 o'clock, and it's going to be taught by Kylie. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, just let us know in the comments. Thank you.